this is a terrarium. Now you might be looking at this and wondering what this is and how exactly does it work. And we're going to talk about that in this video. Hey guys, it's Joe here, coming at you with another video from Hermit Garden. In this video, we're going to talk about terrariums and how they work. So what I have here in front of me is an example of a terrarium. If you've never heard of a terrarium before, essentially what it is, it's a set of plants that are growing inside of a sealed container like this with soil, a bunch of plants, and a completely transparent sealed off container. So looking at that, you might be wondering, how exactly does that work? There seem to be plants that are growing in here with no access to fresh air or water for what we can tell, and they seem to be doing just fine and surviving. So I'm gonna explain that in this video. So essentially a terrarium is a set of plants like this. They're growing inside of a sealed container. And the reason why they're able to do that is because of the recycling of resources and nutrients within the container. And that's the reason why they're able to survive without any sort of external interference. And the reason why that happens is there's actually two cycles that happen inside of a terrarium that allow for the recycling of nutrients and resources. So the first cycle that happens inside of a terrarium is the cycling of water. So when you first set up your terrarium, you're gonna give it a little bit of water and that water is going to trickle down into the soil and it's going to water your plants and it's going to come down into the drainage layer and then evaporate up back into the top of the container and recondense back onto the sides on the walls of the container and then trickle back down into the soil watering your plants and recycling over and over again uh, with a virtually endless supply of water source. The other cycle that happens within the terrarium is the cycling of air within the terrarium. So a lot of people understand that plants need carbon dioxide to breathe. They take in carbon dioxide and produce it to oxygen. You probably remember that from middle school science class. So knowing that, you might be wondering how these plants are able to have enough carbon dioxide in here if they're going to constantly be sucking in carbon dioxide from the container without any fresh, fresh air to replenish that. But one thing a lot of people forget about with plants is that they also need oxygen on top of carbon dioxide. So the reason they need oxygen is to perform respiration. And so what respiration is, it's pretty much you take in oxygen, you use that oxygen to break down nutrients and sugars, and you convert that into energy releasing carbon dioxide in the process. So inside of a terrarium, you have your plants here. They're consuming carbon dioxide during the day to perform photosynthesis and releasing oxygen. And then at night, they'll actually go into a different state where they're taking in oxygen and producing carbon dioxide. And within a terrarium, there's essentially a constantly fluctuating levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide that's going to give plants both enough carbon dioxide and also enough oxygen to survive. And that's the other cycle that happens within a terrarium. So both the water cycle and the cycling of air inside of a terrarium allows for a terrarium to be a complete ecosystem in a bottle that gives plants everything that they need to survive. So as you can probably imagine, it's actually not that simple. So it's not just water and air that plants need, but there's also a few other things that a terrarium will need to do well and have plants that are thriving and not struggling to survive. The first thing that a terrarium will need is the appropriate levels of water. So a lot of people, when they're building their terrarium, will think that, oh, I should just give this terrarium a whole bunch of water so that it has plenty of water to survive for a long period of time. And that can actually be a pretty big mistake. And the reason why that's a mistake is that plants can actually be overwatered. And when plants have too much water, that can cause the plant roots to start rotting and also some mold to start growing inside the terrarium. If the plant roots are rotting, then that causes the plant overall to start dying out, start drooping, start looking yellow, and just generally not, look, not looking too healthy. So with the terrarium, you actually want to stay more towards the underwatering side. You want to give it a little bit less water. Because if you remember, water constantly is going to be recycling within the container without having to be replenished. And so what that means is within the terrarium, you actually want to give it a little bit less water because that water is going to be 
enough to survive. The second thing that terrariums will need is enough sunlight. So a lot of people with terrarium, they kind of treat it like it's some kind of inanimate object, like some kind of decoration or piece of, or some kind of ornament of some sort. And they'll just stick it up on a bookshelf somewhere in the dark with the lights off with no nearby light sources. And that can also be a pretty big mistake when it comes to terrariums. So with the terrarium, plants are still plants. They're the same plants that you'll see out in nature. They need sunlight. And being in a terrarium doesn't change that. So what I recommend with terrariums is that you'll actually want to place it near a window within a few feet of a window. Preferably that window would be facing in the north direction that receives the least amount of sunlight and low levels of sunlight are generally going to be best for terrariums, but they'll still need sunlight nonetheless. At the same time, you also don't want to give it too much sunlight because too much sunlight can actually burn your plants, especially if it's coming through glass. That glass might actually magnify the sunlight and cause your plants to burn. And certain plants just generally don't like to experience too much sunlight. The third thing that a terrarium will need is the appropriate selection of plants. So you can't just throw any plants into a terrarium and expect it to do well. There's only a very certain set of plants that will be suitable for a terrarium. So within a terrarium, you're only going to get a very specific set of conditions that will only work for a specific set of plants. So within a terrarium, you're going to get high humidity and probably low sunlight. And that will those conditions will only work well for plants that prefer growing in the shade in high humidity. So these could be things like moss and ferns. Those are the type of plants that will do well in a terrarium. You definitely don't want to put succulents inside of a closed terrarium because succulents are plants that prefer high levels of sunlight, direct sunlight, uh, higher temperatures, and low humidity. So if, you're if you want to grow plants like that, they are not going to do well inside of a terrarium. At the same time, you also want to pick plants that have very similar requirements, similar levels of preferred humidity and water levels. Because if you're just, if you're going to pick plants that have all the same requirements, there's better chances that they're all going to be happy at the same time. There's not going to be plants that prefer more humidity or, while some prefer less. They're all going to have the same levels of requirements. And so if you give them all the same condition, they're all going to be happy. And that's the last thing you'll want to make sure your terrarium has is the right selection of plants. But that's pretty much how a terrarium works. So just to recap, a terrarium is some plants and some soil or some kind of substrate growing inside of a transparent sealed container like this, where there's essentially a mini ecosystem in a bottle where resources are constantly replenishing themselves, allowing plants to grow and survive inside of a container. But that's pretty much it for this video. If you learned something new, if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.